Today I want to show you how I'm going to prepare a dry glaze. Um, I do not mix my own glazes from uh, just a raw materials and follow recipe. The main reason I do not do that is because I do not really have the facility to store the dry ingredients. Um, I just buy my glazes already prepared. It does cost more, but I'm okay with that. I just, it's, it's not worth it to me for time and the uh, storage that I really don't have. So what I'm going to prepare today is a Coyote brand. It is a clear glaze. Um, when Coyote sells their glazes, they sell it in either uh, dry or wet. Um, a lot of times I buy the wet, but you always pay for the shipping, you know, of uh, the, the water, basically, and with it coming all the way from, I think it's New Mexico, Albuquerque, um, sometimes I just get the dry for it to be a little bit cheaper. So. Um, it has uh, directions right on here. It says for 10 pounds, add one gallon and one pint of water. And I have that prepared in my bucket already. And I'm going to just pretty much dump this in and stir it, but then I'm going to have to run it through a sieve as well. Now, there is a very important safety concern that you always must consider when you are going to be mixing dry ingredients and that is you need to make sure you're not breathing in the dry dust. Um, clay materials whether it's clay or glazes have silica in it and that micro crystalline silica if you breathe it in it is very dangerous. That's why I always have my students clean with a wet mop and um, just try to keep that dust down. I am outside. I'm outside my back door right now because I really didn't want to do this in my studio. I'm outside and I'm going to put my respirator on to do this next bit. I'm just going to stir it in and then I'm going to whisk it up. Once I have it whisked up and the dry ingredients are wet, then I'll take the respirator off. Okay, I can take my respirator off now because I have incorporated the dry ingredients into the wet. Now at this point, I would like to run the glaze through a sieve into a secondary bucket. Uh, the primary reason for that is sometimes you have some particulates that just don't get mixed up well and you want to run them through a sieve to make sure that they're not clumping. I'm gonna switch my spot here. Okay. So what I have here, this is a Talisman sieve, T-A-L-I-S-M-A-N, and it has a screen that uh, goes in the bottom. Honestly, I forget what mesh this is. I'm thinking it might be 80. Um, I can't really remember. It also has these little brushes. I should have, here, I'll show you before I install all the brushes. If you can look at it like this, you can see how the brushes slide in. They are removable, so it's not that difficult to clean. Just take some time and a little bit of elbow grease to clean it. All right, and then I will drop the screen into the bottom. And the screen is sitting on just a little ledge there. Okay, with my sieve ready to go, I'm going to dump this in. Now, if you look in the bottom there, you can see the particulates that, that did not get mixed up well. That's what I want to run through the sieve to make sure that it is mixed. And now, I can just run that through the sieve.
I really try to make sure that all the particulates are mixed up because if you have any particulates that are, you know, uh, specifically heavy or something, they might be a very important ingredient that you need to get mixed up in there. You might not have enough of them. That, and I'm rather frugal with my glazes. I want to make sure that I'm not losing too much. I am going to kind of scrape off the bottom, get that to go into my glaze bucket. And that is good enough for me. And then I just have to wash all that up. Now I have a, a little bit, you know, probably about a gallon and a half of glaze ready to go. And that's how you mix a glaze from dry.